بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم We come into this world as testimonies to our own createdness but also as witnesses to the exalted beauty of God's creation Even the death and decay of the natural world has a beauty of its own Unlike humans whose waste repels nature adorns the earth with the beauty of growth and decay Our prophet peace be upon him said that Islam the final natural religion of humanity din al-fitra revolves around three transcendentals truth of belief iman goodness of practice islam and the beauty of conduct and product ihsan we know that the religion of islam itself cannot be beautified by mere mortals for god revealed it and adorned it with its own divine beauty indeed god is beautiful and loves beauty But here on earth Islam presents itself through human beings and through what human beings make in other words through these earthly vessels that embody or exhibit Islam for instance we know that God's revelation the inimitable Quran cannot be enhanced nor its radiant beauty be embellished we can however enhance and beautify the reciter's voice so that we might deepen and enrich our experience of receiving the words of God The Muslims of the past committed to the visual adornment of the written revelation mastered the arts of calligraphy to exalt the written Quran and crafted magnificent manuscripts that now grace the world's museums. The Prophet Muhammad, God's peace and blessings be upon him, called his community to rectify your homes and adorn your clothes in order that you might be like a beauty mark among humanity. so that when others look upon muslims and their works they might see god's beauty reflected in them the early muslims took their prophet's words to heart they maintained welcoming homes and embellished their clothes to reflect the dignity conferred by god on all human beings so even the peasant or pauper resembled a prince muslims also built the most stunning architectural masterpieces that still strike awe and astonishment in onlookers from the alhambra palace in spain to the blue mosque in turkey to the char minar and the taj mahal in india they enhance their works with ihsan that intangible beauty making quality of islam that cannot be seen touched or heard but only experienced through sight sense and sound due to its immateriality that evokes other worldly dimensions they inspired other civilizations to compete in bestowing the world with beautiful monuments that reflected their own traditions the christians for example learned of stained glass from egyptian muslims and illuminated their churches with the techniques that muslims had been using to ornament their mosques when the prophet peace and god's blessings be upon him said i was sent only to teach He reminded us that intellect alone distinguishes humanity from the rest of creation and that it must be nurtured through deliberate and lifelong learning. Seek knowledge even unto China became a rallying call of a civilization that the historian Franz Rosenthal proclaimed as unique in human history because of its core mandate to seek, advance and preserve knowledge. In the entire Quran, God commands the prophet peace and blessings be upon him to ask for increase for only one attribute knowledge and that quranic verse adorns the zaytuna college seal my lord increase me in knowledge this thirst for knowledge and wisdom sparked an intellectual tradition unparalleled in prior human history muslims plumbed the depths of the arts and sciences and penned some of the first major works of grammar known to man as well as the first scientific dictionaries they invented new literary art forms such as the maqamat blending rhymed prose and poetry they gave the gift of arabic numerals to the west they developed algebra and trigonometry paving the way for calculus and many of the great modern achievements in mathematics and the sciences they immersed themselves in the great works of literature and history from such far away places as india and persia infusing them with new life in works such as Kalila and Dimna, Adab al-Dunya wa Deen, and A Thousand and One Nights. They translated the classics of Greek logic, philosophy, mathematics, and science into Arabic. In fact, it was the great translation movements in the Muslim world that helped launch a renaissance of learning and fertilization that awakened Europe from its long intellectual slumber and led to some of the most important advances in the West. 
Early Muslim centers of learning became the envy of the world and inspired the great Christian universities in France, Italy, and England during the Middle Ages, which taught the sciences that they had learned from the Muslims. Humanity's great teaching institutions were built by Muslims for a reason. They knew that structured learning provided the best means to prepare students for the challenge of cultivating this world for its own success, but more importantly, for success in another more perfect, more excellent, more beautiful world. Hence, Muslims built their schools to remind students of paradise and the higher purpose of education. They inculcated a love of beauty and ihsan in their students, which was mirrored even in the notebooks they left behind, in the stunning illuminations of their manuscripts, and in the dignified clothes they wore that exemplified the nobility of their pursuit of sacred knowledge. Inspired by the Quran's vivid descriptions of a verdant paradise, Muslims cultivated landscapes with the Four Gardens theme memorialized by the Indo-Persian civilization as Charbagh. They enriched and ennobled their schools and mosques with such gardens that featured octagonal fountains to call to mind the eight throne carriers upon water mentioned in the Quran. The architecture was often graced with geometrical patterns and tessellations theoretically capable of infinite repetition to evoke the infinite one hidden behind the dazzling multiplicity of creation. In all these ways, Muslims and what they built served as the vessels of Islam, reflecting the beauty of God's last revelation. Today, however, the beauty of the vessel has receded, veiling many from the beauty of its content. The Prophet, God's peace and blessings be upon him, warned us to be mindful of how others perceived Islam, saying, give glad tidings and do not dissuade people or cause aversion in their hearts of Islam. He knew that all people naturally incline towards the beautiful and that their souls recognize beauty when they see it. He, peace be upon him, desired the vessels to be noble and edifying so that haply the hearts might awaken and turn to the truth within. Today, when Muslims are sadly witnessing the destruction and neglect of much of Islam's rich inheritance, we aim to transform the Zaytuna College campus, God willing, so that it becomes renowned both for its ethereal beauty as well as its devotion to learning. We hope it becomes a place that attracts from far and wide students and others so they might witness and experience the beautiful vessel that encases and emanates from the beauty of Islam. About a hundred years ago, Thomas Church, a world-renowned American landscape architect who had studied the Islamic Moorish and Andalusian gardens while in Europe, created the blueprints for the gardens of the property that currently houses Zaytuna College's upper campus. He chose as his theme Islamic gardens based upon the Charbagh design, not knowing that one day Muslim students would walk among his designs and contemplate the very Quran which inspired his vision. We want to restore his glorious designs to their original splendor as a testimony to the beauty of our faith. Our vision for this college remains firm, to educate and prepare future generations of students in a beautiful setting conducive to the pursuit of knowledge so that they might go into the world as intellectual and spiritual ambassadors armed with the power of permanent truth, a precious gift bestowed upon us by our Creator. Our Prophet, God's peace and blessings be upon him, was a transformer of worlds. Because of his embodiment of God's beauty, today, millions of mosques call the faithful five times a day to the simple beauty of submission to God. Our Prophet, God's peace and blessings be upon him, gifted us a vision of how we might embody and exhibit that beauty. So we ask that you join us as we endeavor to artfully and attentively transform our campus into a timeless vessel that will, God willing, remind all who come to study or to visit of that otherworldly garden awaiting. Please support us as we strive to remind a parched humanity in the barren desert of modernity that Muslims who once helped transform the world can God willing be once again that beauty mark that the Prophet ﷺ called us to be.